Hi everyone, it's Taryn. And Stella here from Meeple University. Thank you for joining us. Today we'll show you a quick how to play or overview for Kingdoms Forlorn, the Clash part of the game. Stay tuned. If you find value from this video later, please hit the like button, subscribe to us, hit the bell and leave your feedback in the comments. For now, let's get to the game. Kingdoms Forlorn is an immersive dungeon crawling, grid based and character development game with role playing elements. It was designed by Martin Valnicki and published by Into the Unknown. The game plays 1 to 4 players with a campaign of over 150 hours gameplay, each session lasting a couple of hours and is of medium complexity. In this video, we'll talk about the Clashes, the game's grid based battle phase. For a look at the Delves, which represent the narrative and character development, check our other video linked in the description below. Kingdoms Forlorn has a range of clashes, including against simple mobs, boss battles, curses and more. The objective is generally simple, kill all the enemies before the enemies kill all the knights. The battle sequence is straightforward, first the enemies act, then the knights. The enemies are controlled by an AI card, choosing a target and then moving towards it and attacking. Knights get two actions each, a move and an attack in either order plus free actions if applicable. This is repeated until one side has won. When the enemy attacks it chooses a target from a list of steps. Some, but not all, of these are limited by line of sight determined by a corner to corner line which neither crosses nor touches an obstacle. Some enemies also have directional blind spots which you can hide in for a lesser chance of being attacked. The enemy moves towards the target orthogonally. Smaller mobs avoiding obstacles and minis, and bosses barging through them. The enemy then attacks. The player first rolls to evade, this many d10s trying to roll this number or better. Defensive gear and abilities can improve the roll results. Each unevaded roll could deal damage according to the AI card. If you have armor then you'll roll power dice and each of these symbols blocks a hit. Any remaining hits reduce your vigor. If you lose any vigor you draw one mortis card and resolve it and the severity of this card will depend on your current vigor. These have a range of positive and negative effects. Knight attacks also resolve with two rolls of dice. First choose a weapon and then roll this many d10s, trying to roll over this number on the enemy and boosting for precision bonuses, ability cards and similar. If you hit, draw a body part card and then note its defense. Then roll power dice equal to your power, your weapon's power multiplied by your number of hits, so this for example would give another die, and any other bonuses. Each sword that you roll scores a power, and armor symbols can also be converted to power by spending tokens from the token pool. If you meet the body part's defense value, then you wound the enemy, possibly causing some other excess effects and maybe earning a retaliatory strike. Clashes in Kingdom Forlorn are designed to be dynamic and to constantly escalate in severity. As a knight, you gain passion each time you attack, which moves you up on your heroic arc, unlocking more abilities and icons. As you lose vigor, you will trigger new steps in your peril arc, giving you more capacity for heat, which you can gain in order to reroll failed d10s. For the enemies, wounds make both the AI deck and the body parts deck more challenging, either by removing low level cards, adding high level cards, or both. At the same time there is a challenging tactical cooperative battle at play. Players use their effects to add helpful tokens into the shared knight pool, which the whole team can use, either passively or by spending the tokens, to boost the outcomes of their attacks. Players must also trust the luck of the dice, especially the white die, which is always rolled as part of any d10 roll and counts as a critical hit on a 10. Fully wound the enemy and it is defeated. Remove it from the board and if you defeat all enemies you win the clash. 
but be reduced to zero vigor and your knight faces judgment. Draw a Judicium card to see whether you live or die. Die and you're out of the clash, but not the campaign, as you will be resurrected, but usually at the loss of some of the clues that you gained during the delve. If all of the knights die, then the clash and the current delve are lost. But even in that event, you'll still gain loot for any wounds you've inflicted on the enemy and will proceed with the rest of your campaign. The clash phase of Kingdoms Forlorn is an intentionally challenging cooperative skirmish experience. Regular skirmishers will enjoy making the most of the wide array of keyword effects, pushes, knockbacks, pierces, blocks, and many, many others to provide full and realistic range of tactical options. The opportunity to cooperate and to watch for when higher level cards are coming for the enemies makes for challenging risk management situations. And that's our quick how to play of Kingdoms for Long, The Clash. Hopefully it's been useful. We are using a prototype copy of the game here, and so the rules and components may not be final. Do check out the project page for the game, we'll put a link to that in the description below, as well as a link to our video on the delve portion of the game. If you enjoyed this video, please help us by hitting the like button. Subscribe to us, you can also hit the meeple in the corner to do so, and hit the bell icon so you will know when we have new videos. You can also follow me on Instagram for my board games journey. And if you have any questions, comments or feedback, please leave them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and see you next time!